Oh Lord Jesus, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the light. We thank you for the lesson of, of, of that light and what it, what it means. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for, for our church. We pray that we could be a light. We pray that we as individuals could be even a little light, but, but why be a little light when we can be so much brighter? Lord, help us to be a lamp. Help us to be a, a light on. Help us to be a, a light on a hill that illumines so much, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name for his sake. today is found in Luke, the 14th chapter, as we look at the gospel lesson. Boy, I wanted to uh, comment here, uh, enjoyed hearing uh, several speakers on Friday at the funeral that I attended, it's from my brother-in-law, uh, and everybody was finally able to make it home, so thank you very much for your prayers and uh, concern for, for our family and, and uh, all the many people that were that were affected as, as uh, there's his own siblings and, and uh, you know, both, sides of, both sides of the family. And so we thank you for your prayers. But I heard four, four speakers at the funeral. The, uh, the, the pastor who, uh, who was uh, officiating and, and then three other pastors that were able, or two other pastors that were able to share. And, uh, and so it was uh, quite, quite instructive. I always like to be able to hear other people and, uh, and participate in, in those, those types of things. So we made it back safe and sound, and we thank you for your prayers. This is an interesting passage, an interesting story told by our Lord. While at a social function, verse 1 of, of our chapter, and it's, it introduces, it says, Now it happened as he went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath, that they watched him closely, it says. It's, an in, it's interesting how similar their customs are to today's. Jesus, as, a, as he's dining in this ruler of the Pharisees' house, it, and the scripture is careful to point that out, that it's not just not just any Pharisee, not just any ruler. The Pharisees, of course, were the were were, were the sect, one of the sects that, that was strictly religious. They were experts in the law. They were experts on right and wrong, what you should be and what you should do. And I suppose that even in some ways they were kind of law enforcement in, in a sense. They, they had their own people that would, the, the temple guards and so on, that, that could actually actually put some muscle into the law. But yet, if you saw a Pharisee on the side of the road, or, or if you met a Pharisee, you would know it, and you would make sure that you were walking correctly. So here the Lord is, 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 is at to dine at, at one of these places. And, and for probably most of us, we've been in a situation where we've been invited to a meal or a banquet or we've been invited someplace where, where we don't eat like we normally eat. No elbows on the table, no, uh, you know, all of your best etiquette and you're still sweating because you're afraid that you're going to do something wrong or, or, or grab the wrong piece of silver. I, I don't think the Lord was, was too bothered by that, as he was not bothered by all the, all the rules and the laws of man and so on. And in fact, as we move down to the, the, the verses which contain our reading for, for this Sunday, and it says in verse 15, Now when one of those who had been at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And that sounds like a great little statement, exclamation point at the end of that sentence in my, in my Bible. And then in verse 16, Jesus replies. Jesus replies in verse 16, he says, a, great, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many. Many of us have probably been afraid to maybe say anything, but the Lord takes the opportunity 
to steal the show, I, I suppose you could say it that way. Wasn't afraid of what the implications were. He wasn't afraid of, of how they'd take it, whether they'd take it wrong. He just, he just blurted it out. And of course, as we understand that what he blurted out and the story that he told was, 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 was a very, very sharp dagger, I believe, into their hearts. Wasn't afraid who he was going to offend. A certain man gave a great supper and invited many and, his, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. It was interesting to see, you know, that some of our some of our words that we use today come straight out of the Bible, believe it or not. It said in my Bible, it said in in verse 16, a certain man gave a great supper. What kind of supper was it? It was a mega supper. We use the word, kids use the word mega all the time. And that's literally the word in the Bible, believe it or not. That's literally the word that we have here is mega. Kids, did you know that? When you use the word mega, you're, you're quoting the, the actual Greek uh, text of the, of the scripture. You say, I'm mega hungry dad, or whatever, or mom, or whatever. <laughs> it's right here. It's, he gave a mega dinner. That's exactly what it says in the Greek. You know what? We, we, we don't know the specific occasion of this story. But we know that banquets mark an important transitional point in a person's life. We, if, we, if we would have looked at this text last week, uh, during confirmation, or the week before, whichever it was, I lose, lose track of these weeks, we know we, this would have been a perfect time for that. Because many of you had a banquet. <laughs> And if you had graduates, you had a banquet. And maybe, you're, maybe you've got some banquet planned. We had a wedding last month, and there was a banquet. And, and so we, we, our, our Old Testament scripture here in the passage from Isaiah chapter 25, it says, On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples. A banquet, it says, of aged wine. The beautiful picture in scripture is that there, is, there are banquets that are prepared for, for us in the future. In, in Revelation, Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 through 9, it talks about one of those such banquets that, that we can look forward to as believers in Christ. In uh, Revelation chapter 19, I cannot turn pages quickly anymore. Re Revelation 19, verses 7 through 9, and it says... Uh, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready and to her was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, write, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. I want to save this marker in the end of Revelation because we're going to come back to this. Isaiah passage. Isaac in Genesis 21 uh, we, we read about a banquet. Jacob in Genesis chapter 29 we read about a banquet, etc. And we could even include the Last Supper and as we think about communion today, as we participate and partake of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus at the communion table, we, we could say that we are enjoying a banquet as well. But all we know is what is given in the words of this parable. It doesn't say it, so it, it doesn't say what it is. It could be a wedding, it could be something else. But what do we learn from this? We can break down the basic elements of the message on that last, on that Sabbath. God is good, but invitations. And, and God is good about invitations. 
and loves to celebrate. And I think that's what we learned from this passage. Let's focus on the master. First of all, the banquet and the occasion. As I mentioned, we don't know what the occasion was. It was the master's supper, it says. And Jesus actually stated, a certain man gave a great supper. People love food and family, food and friends. And as I said, it's literally mega. We don't know, but, but we know that, <clears throat> that the master's supper, we know that it was an important time for this master. And that he took time, he took, he took some of his wealth, and he invested, he spent the time, he spent the money. And it says in three places, talks about invitation. In verse 16, it's, it talks about the invitations. It says a certain man gave, gave a great supper and invited many. In verse 17, and he sent his servant at the supper, and he said, time to say to those who were invited. And in verse 24, it says, for I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste of my supper. God is a God of invitation. God has extended invitations to each one of us today. God has extended an invitation wonderfully to every person, every man, woman, and child on this planet. Isn't that great? Isn't that good news? And, 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 and we, we would realize that as, as people who have grown up in the church, that God has granted and God has given an invitation. As we read two Sundays ago in, John, in the third chapter of John, John 3, 16, we only went through verse 15, but we know what verse 16 says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's an invitation. Well, secondly, the reason or motivation. We don't know what it was specifically. We don't know what the occasion was. It's not given to us by the Lord. It, it was certainly a planned event and probably some sort of religious ceremony. But what we do know is that the man wanted to share this event with his friends. He wanted to share this event. What is it about sharing this event? Inviting your friends, come. You, you, you get on the phone and you, or you, 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 you put out an invitation. You want your friends to come over and to celebrate some good thing that has happened. And I appreciate being included as a pastor in celebrations. I appreciate that for, for, you know, not because I like to eat, which I do, but I appreciate that because I love to celebrate with my people, with, with, with you all. Because I also realize that there are times when we will grieve. So I want to be there in the good times as well as the bad times, Lord willing. Because the pastor hopefully is going to be able to be there in all of those times and to celebrate, to observe that. This man wanted to share the event and so he sent out invitations and the scripture and Jesus emphasizes three different times about how he sent out invitations, how the people were invited. And it states he sent out invitations and announcements. And there are several places in the Bible where God has graciously given out invitations. We mentioned that. Isaiah 25, verses 6 through 9. Revelation chapter 3, 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man would hear my voice and open the door, he shall come in to me, come in with me, and sup with me. And we read from Revelation 19, 7 through 9. And then also from Matthew 11, 25 to 30, another, another great passage of invitation where Jesus makes the statement. He says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest for, my, for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And then I mentioned we go back to Revelation chapter, chapter 22, and this is where it says, it says, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. That's found in 22.17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Isaiah 55, we could add as well in the Old Testament, many places in the Bible where God gives out gracious invitations. As I said, you've received an invitation from God. And many of you have responded to that invitation through faith. We had confirmation a couple weeks ago, and our confirmants responded to that invitation, that gracious invitation of faith in Christ. But I know that there are some that have not responded, perhaps, or maybe who have, who have maybe gotten the invitation and, and, and come up with, with some reasons why they can't go, and we'll talk about that now. As the, as the spotlight moves from the master to his friends, and, in, and this is the third, the man's friends, the third heading. And as the role, there, there's, there's two people in this text. There's the faithful servant who went out into the highways and byways, who did the inviting, who, who announced that all things are ready, and that it was time to come. There was the servant also that, when they didn't come, went out and invited the poor and the lame and the blind. And then he also went out to the highways and hedges, it says in the scripture, or the highways and byways. This is the faithful servant. This is our calling. This is, this is our calling. Well, then it's the, the other group is the, is the friends who received the invitation. And the sad part of this text is it appears that no one, that no one responded to the invitation. No one responded. And, and, and though they received invitations in advance, they, they did not respond. You know, absence at the master's table is bad. But absence with flimsy excuses is insulting. Why did they not come? Well, we see the various excuses there. They were all polite, at least a couple of them here. And, and notice they were all quote unquote legitimate excuses. There were, there were two, two classes, commercial and fam familial, fam or at least family related. It's easier to write that down than it is to say it. Two purchases, the commercial ones I, I have. Uh, um, it says in verse 18, but they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I bought a piece of ground, I must go see it. And asked that you have me to excuse. The other said, I bought five yoga oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excuse. And then the third one, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. That's the one in verse 20 that he didn't, he didn't, he didn't say he asked permission. He just said, I can't come. The Mary <laughs> Reflections. So, so why do we make excuses? Note they traded fellowship or social interaction with their with their master for private individual pursuits. And this is what we trade for when we when we decline the master's invitations. You know, God uses the word come throughout the Bible. And the question needs to be asked is, why would this man and his friends not want to celebrate with this man? What did they have that was so important? Here you have a, a wealthy benefactor in your midst. 
Somebody who is willing to invest in everything that you need. And here they, they, they decline and, and make excuses. Have you made excuses for declining the master's invitation? Based on some quote unquote legitimate reason. These, of course, prove to be not very legitimate. People have poked holes in these excuses and said, who would buy land and not go look at it? Who would buy oxen and not try them out? My, oh my. I trust that as you have received the invitation of a gracious master, that you will accept that and trust him as your Lord and Savior, as many already as have done. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this, this wonderful, challenging, sometimes painful admonition. Lord, help us remember that all of our pursuits, nothing is more important than, than the gracious invitation of our Father. So Lord, help us to keep that.